Hey Tribe, Prishia here and I'm sure a lot of you are already saying that she hasn't travelled all over the north and south of India, how would she know what the differences are? But from a little bit of the travel that I have been recently doing and if you've been following me on my social media handles then you would know where all I have been, these are a few of the very stark differences that I have noticed. After all, this is just my opinion and my observation. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you in the comment section below as well. All of you from the East and the West, sorry for ignoring you all, but this is about someone else. But I also think that your opinions would be uh, very objective and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Because after all, our friends from the North and the South, what they have to say, it just might be a little biased. To get a scale of the distance between the northernmost state and the southernmost state, it's the distance between France and Nigeria or Canada to central Mexico. So if the distance is going to be this much, there are bound to be differences even though they belong to the same mother. Yes, there are major differences, especially when it comes to food, the Churidar versus the Kanjivaram, Hindustani music versus Carnatic music, the lush mountains of the north versus south and plenty of misconceptions like the colour of skin. But hey, these guys, they're from the south and these guys, they're from the north. The difference between the two has a historical foundation and if you take a look at this video, then you can see that the south of India was colonised very few times. The Chola Kingdom and the early Pandya dynasty, they ruled for a close to almost thousand years. Under stable governments, culture, art, architecture flourished and that's why if you look at any of the dance or paintings from India, the older schools were always found in the south. The north in the meantime was constantly under attack and different empires would rule and erase the previous empire's contribution. When I talk to people, I find that they think of India's history in very blanket terms of the British, the Mughal, the Marathas, the Rajputs but from this video you can see that India, especially the North, was ruled by many different empires. While the Gangetic Plains were fertile, they were also easily accessible through the Khyber Pass. The South on the other hand, equally fertile but accessible only by boat. A lot of the boats that did land there, they were merchant boats and not led by armies. With trade came an understanding of other cultures without having to call them masters. Now here's a story that will blow your mind, especially if you've just joined the tribe. People have a tendency to believe that Islam came from the north, but the very first mosque to have been built in India during Muhammad's lifetime was built right here in Kerala. The king of Kerala had heard of Muhammad and set sail to meet him. Even though he didn't manage to convert to Islam, he did promise Muhammad that his people and his followers would have a place of worship right here in the south. And that's where the first mosque ever got built in India. This mosque, it still exists in India. So understand that the British did not give us Christianity and the Mughals did not give us Islam. But it's the merchant vessels that brought these religions to Indian shores. Even though the South did get colonised before the North, the British were very focused on Delhi and Bengal. Yes, they did have centres in Madras. But their relationship with the kings of the south was less disruptive than the north. People from the north were constantly moving from one place to another, while those in the south were allowed to stay and their roots were deepened even more. Now we all know what happens to deep roots. It makes for the foundation for a really strong tree. Why is it that Kerala and Tamil Nadu are spotlessly clean as compared to UP, MP or Bihar? It comes from education, it comes from culture and it also comes from having a deeper sense of belonging. People from the south are deeply affected if their natural resources are depleted and that is why some of the jungles from the south are richer and greener compared to the north. The north of India, it has two sides to its coin. Because of the constant upheaval that is taking place, the energy, it's always new. There is a survival instinct and a warrior spirit that does kick in which makes it a little stronger. So compare America to Europe. It's young, new, flashy and always trying to impress. In our case, 
Hindi movies with its obviously northern influences becomes the barometer for pop culture in India. Yes, southern movies have caught up, but in today's day and age, it's still easier to watch a Hindi movie in Madhurai than to try and catch a Tamil movie in Mathura. So I'm going to end this video with two points. I could have spoken about women's safety and thrown a whole bunch of numbers and figures at you. Yes, it would be a very good barometer of a society's progress. But at the same time, we have to understand that Kerala, it was matriarchal. Women over there are much more educated and therefore more empowered. But honestly, this is another whole topic and it could be a whole video by itself. Because they have more peace, different religions are able to exist with one another. And they're also less suspicious of each one's intentions as compared to the North. You could generalize if you wanted to say that South Indians are geeks and North Indians are loud. But in the comment section, let's try and learn from each other. Let's talk about the good and not really focus on the bad. After all, we're all cousins from the same mother. I'm really looking forward to the conversation that is going to start in that comment section below. Don't forget, there's all my social media handles that you can reach out to me as well. Like this video, share this video and I'm going to catch you guys very, very soon. Ciao!